is the life studious and boring? I've heard in India that engineers don't have life. So I want to listen from somebody who's doing engineering in Canada. Can you pay your own tuition fee just with the co-op? One advice that you want to give to current high school students. Welcome back to my channel, Punjabi Girl Vlogs. I hope you're all fine and staying safe. My name is Helene and as you know, I make content on student life in Canada. So today we have my friend um, who is in engineering at University of Waterloo to help answer the questions that you have about uh, Waterloo engineering. And I hope it will be helpful because I got tons of questions even on my Instagram. So we will, we will be taking both Instagram questions and the other questions that I usually get asked about Waterloo engineering. Uh, if you don't know that Waterloo is one of the top schools for engineering in Canada, and uh, so we'll hear directly from him what his experience has been like. First of all, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, sure. Hello everyone, I'm Himal. I'm currently completing my fourth year in Mechatronics Engineering undergraduate program. Uh, so we'll do a rapid fire, quick rapid fire round, uh, just to so that you can know his background a uh, little. Okay, let's get started. Are you ready? Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, which board did you complete high school with? Uh, I completed high school with Cambridge International A level and AS level. Okay. Uh, did what courses did you take in grade twelve? Um, in grade twelve, I took physics, mathematics, uh, further mathematics, chemistry, and English. Oh uh, well, Mechatronics sounds really tough to me. I don't know how he's doing it, but okay. Third question: Did you go through any interview process for admission at Waterloo? Um, no, there was no formal interview process, but I did have to answer some essay questions. Yeah, well, uh, everybody has to answer some kind of questions. Um, that's called admission information form. That's EIF. Uh, fourth question: Can you start a startup during your studies as an international student? Uh, yes, you definitely can. In fact, there are several programs such as Velocity, which will help fund your idea if you can prove your idea to them. Wow. Okay, next question. Okay, this is a fun one. Um, is the life studious and boring? I've heard in India that engineers don't have life. So I want to listen from somebody who's doing engineering in Canada. Is your life studious and boring? <laughs> no, no, there's nothing like it. It honestly depends completely on you. You're, you can make your life fun and entertaining while working very studiously as well. So I think it completely depends on you. If you want to have fun, go ahead and have fun. But you need to know how to balance your life. Well, well. that was a rapid fire round and you explained really well. Um, <laughs> Did I mention already that uh, I am feeling like on cloud nine because I am not the speaker this time. I am the host, so it's a different feeling. <laughs> Next question. Uh, explain Waterloo in one word. Well, I'll just pull off whatever Waterloo's tagline is. Innovation. And I think that is a very good word to describe the University of Waterloo. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Uh, there are so many innovative things that Waterloo brings up, like for students. Okay, next question. How many hours uh, do you study apart from classes? Apart from classes, well, my class is at 5.30 and after that I think I spend around 4 or 5 hours to oh. not study. Oh, so your classes are from 8.30 to 5.30? That's wow, right. that's like a completely 9 to 5 job. And then apart from that, he has to study um, to complete, complete his assignments and stuff. Uh, let's get to the main questions. Um, that will clarify everything, all the questions that you had. Our first question is, why did you choose to study abroad? Did you have any other plans like to study in India? Uh, no, so actually I studied most of my life in India and I wanted to get a change. So that's why I decided to study abroad. In fact, one of the main reasons why I wanted uh, to study abroad was because I wanted to get new exposure, uh, get more perspective and also I wanted to get outside my comfort zone and learn to be more independent. And I thought that studying abroad would actually help me accomplish that and so far no regrets. Yeah, that's a really good answer. I wish I was that clear with my future when I was in 12th. Like I was, my plans were all over the place. 
So let's not talk about me right now. But another question that we have is how much percentage did you have in grade twelve when you applied, and were you offered a scholarship? So in grade twelve, I my main courses were physics and mathematics, and for that, as I mentioned before, I am uh, doing. Cambridge. I did Cambridge International A levels, so for that I did get the highest grade possible, um, the highest category of grade possible, which is A star for physics and mathematics. And I got a decent grade for the rest of my courses, but the more relevant ones, I did get a very good grade. Uh, and I think that's what helped me get my admission. And as far as scholarship is concerned, I think uh, I got the presidential scholarship, which is basically like an entrance scholarship. Um, and I think I got around two thousand dollars for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, there's a great cutoff for which you get that scholarship, and I'm not sure what the rules are right now. Mm -hmm. It might be different. The yeah. the great cutoff, etc. Yeah. So he mentioned a really good point that they do look at your major grades a lot. So for example, like he's in mechatronics, is physics and maths, right? Yeah. Uh, grades were really good, so it was easy for him to get into what you do. Um, so your they will look at your major grades. So keep that in mind. Um, also, the scholarship thing. Um, if you have above ninety percent, even in CBSE, uh, there's good chances that you'll be um, given a chance for entrance scholarship. But let me mention that they always keep changing the rules. So we applied in twenty sixteen, both of us. Um, they might have changed some rules now. So I would really recommend that they, you do check their website before actually applying. One quick question, did you give any IELTS exam? Right. No, I did not give any IELTS exam, but I did give a TOEFL exam and the TOEFL exam was actually for other universities like the universities in the US. It was not for University of Waterloo as they didn't require it as long, for me at least the requirement was that as long as I did some high level English, that is in grade 12 I did AS level English and that and getting a good grade in that was sufficient for university or water to admission. Yeah, that does clarify a lot of questions that I get whether IELTS is required. A uh, lot of universities do require IELTS, but even I got my admission into Waterloo without any IELTS or TOEFL exam. So um, it's beneficial that you do it uh, for other universities, but Waterloo for now doesn't have any such requirement. At least until like 2017, 2018, they didn't have any such requirement. Um, okay, next question is, why did you choose Waterloo particularly? Did you apply to any other universities? Um, so I did apply to a lot of other universities, mostly in Canada and US since I always had the idea that I want to study abroad. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, why I chose Waterloo, two main reasons for that. One reason is that the program. So mechatronics engineering as a program is not offered in a lot of universities. Mm -hmm. Now when I started applying to universities, I knew that I wanted to do something related to maybe mechanical, electrical or software, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure which one to go with. And mechatronics engineering actually gives me that flexibility to try different courses from different disciplines and then go on to specialize in something a bit more, which I'm comfortable with. So that's why I went with engineering in, like, in University of Waterloo because I'm offered that. Mm -hmm. And the second reason is co-op. Uh, I think no other school in Canada or US can provide as good an experience for co-op mm -hmm. compared to University of Waterloo. In fact, University of Waterloo is very famous for its co-op programs. Mm -hmm. It has helped me prepare uh, for my career ahead, mm -hmm. not just from work experience, but even how to get interviews, etc. And I think that that is a very good plus point behind why you should choose Waterloo over some of the other universities. Um, yeah, exactly. Okay, the next question uh, we have is, and the main one, can you pay your own tuition fee just with the co-op? I see. Okay, so the answer actually depends on what kind of job you get on co-op. Hmm. From my personal experience and from what I've heard from others, um, if you get a job in Canada, uh, the chances are that you would not be able to pay your international tuition fees just based on co-op. Mm. You will need some other support. 
But uh, I've heard from some of my friends that when you do a co-op in US, there might be a chance that you will be able to earn enough mm-hmm. to pay your own tuition fees. Yes. Um, may I know um, your approximate uh, per semester tuition fee? So per semester, it has been around 22,000 Canadian dollars to around 25,000 Canadian dollars. And I think it keeps changing every mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Um, for me at least, personally, every year it increases a little bit. Yeah. And uh, just to clarify that Waterloo keeps increasing tuition fee for internationals, no, not for international, for everybody, every year. Especially for new students, like it increases by I think two percent, um, approximately like by two percent or three percent. Um, and also to mention that his tuition fee, that that means engineering tuition fee, is much higher than my tuition fee in economics. Uh, I my program falls under arts faculty, so I pay very low uh, tuition fee compared to his tuition fee. Uh, another question that we have is how does your normal day look like when you are on study term? I know when you are on work term, you are pretty relaxed, um, <laughs> like watching Netflix and you are pretty relaxed. <laughs> what about when you are on study term? Like uh, we are all like friends. Uh, let me tell you that when he's on study term that we don't even see him like for like weeks. Like he's that busy. So how does your normal day look like? So yes, as you mentioned, it does get very busy. Um, in fact, University of Waterloo Engineering is infamous for having very hectic schedules. Uh, we start our day at 8.30 in the morning and end our day at around 5 or 5.30 p.m. in the afternoon. And it, it seems like a regular nine to five job or maybe just a normal day at school. Mm-hmm. But the thing is that you have to be very, very focused throughout all your classes, all your labs, all your tutorials. If you want to remember everything and if you want to uh, do well in your assignments or examinations. So uh, I guess, yes, it's very hectic. After my 8.30 to 5 classes, I have to try and study more so that I, I can retain whatever I did throughout the day. So now I see why he, like he has tea or chai at least twice or thrice a day. That's the reason it's why. It's <laughs> so do you think uh, that you have time to do a part-time job? Like looking and listening at it, I, I feel like engineering students do not get the time for a part-time job because you get so many assignments, right? Um, and lab work and everything. Yes. Um, so there are a lot of deadlines and they can come at you real fast and you wouldn't even realize that you have so much of work piled up. Now, you can still do part-time work, there's no denying it and I've seen students who have done part-time work who are in engineering, Um, but the thing is you have to know your limit. Now, for me, I am somewhere around average or just above average Hmm. student and for me, managing part-time work alongside studies would affect my grades and I know that I cannot take that risk but I have a few friends who I know who are usually at the top of their class they well they can understand the same concept in lesser time than me and that's a good thing for them so they do manage to have some sort of part-time work alongside their normal studies Mm -hmm. so it really depends on you you can push your limit you can choose whatever you feel uh, as long as you do not you do not spoil the balance between your grades and your work life. Hmm. Well, I don't agree with the point that you said you are an average student because you <laughs> got into Waterloo and getting into Waterloo engineering is really competitive because a lot of students apply and their acceptance, acceptance rate is not that high. Okay, um, one more question that we have is was it hard getting adjusted to such competitive environment? I have heard what students in Waterloo Engineering are very, very competitive. Do you right. agree? Yes, I 100% agree. In fact, as you said, like you do not think of me as an average student, but uh, yes, I, in fact, in my high school, I definitely used to be at the top of my class for most of my courses. And 
it was a shock for me when I first came and when I first gave my examinations and when I first gave my, I got my results. Mm. Um, it is a very competitive year. In fact, even for the optional projects or optional assignments, people will give their level best in order to be get a better grade than mm. everyone else. In fact, to to have this competitive nature, nature um, engineering is one of the only departments in University of Waterloo who that release um, rankings for every student. So every student will have a rank at the end of their semester. So that shows you that like it, it is a competitive nature and mm. the department wants you to do better than others and they inspire that. So yes, initially it was hard for me to adjust because it was demotivating for me at the beginning that, okay, I'm one of the top like I was in high school. Mm. But I think one key thing that got me through when I started doing better in general was one that uh, I tried to work more for myself rather than compare myself to others. Yeah, I mean, this one, this is really inspiring uh, because I think uh, I completely agree and I really want to work on that uh, too, that we should be focusing more on ourselves rather than comparing ourselves with others because especially like in a competitive environment, just to survive that environment, I think it's really, really important, right? Right, right. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not discouraging your you from comparing yourself to mm -hmm. others. It's definitely good to have a healthy competition, try and improve yourself because you are seeing, you're inspired by someone else mm -hmm. that they are doing so much better and they're understanding something maybe better than you. Mm -hmm. How are they doing it? Maybe it's, a, it's you can actually push yourself without a doubt, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't push yourself to the limit that you are spoiling for instance your mental health. Yeah. It's um, yeah, that's a really good answer. Uh, well, I'm also learning a lot from him today. <laughs> So I think he explained us really well and I hope it answered a lot of your questions, not just for engineering, but uh, for from Waterloo's perspective in general. Um, and I'm like, they were really good answers. You explained everything so well. One last question for everybody, um, not for everybody, one last question from everybody is that, what's one advice that you want to give to current high school students? I see. Okay. Um, so grades are your most important um, leverage to get into University of Waterloo Engineering. But other than grades, uh, I think it's also very important to have good extracurricular curricular activities. Yeah. Um, so for instance, um, I'm in mechatronics engineering and I did not have much exposure to software mm. before I came into university. And since I have more interest in software, it it was definitely uh, kind of a minus point for me during my first co-op placement to get a job related to software. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in something um, other than you, other than getting good grades, try and focus a bit more on your extracurriculars as well, as it will help you get a very good first job. And if you get a very good first job, believe me, all other all your other co-op placements will also be very good. Yeah, I definitely wanna talk a little about that, that first job, first co-op job is definitely the hardest, right? And how to, how to get a first job is they will look at your extracurriculars because we, after 12, we don't have any job experience. So try to work on your extracurriculars a lot, maybe work on any side project, especially if you're coming into a technical um, field. I would suggest that maybe work on any side project that um, that leverage your experience in that particular field, um, or maybe other extracurricular such as debate competitions or sports. Just be part of different uh, things. And now that you have time, I think that's the best way you can work on it. Because after coming to Waterloo, especially in engineering, you won't get the time. I'm telling you, right? That is true. That is, true. That is very true. In fact. Uh, you will have to apply for your co-ops right after the first or second semester and you would not have your time to invest um, and improve your resume that much. So I highly advise that other than getting good grades, you should also try and invest your time in some extracurriculars that can help you get some job. Yeah. 
um that's all we had uh, hopefully it was useful found it useful uh, please please like the video and let us know in the comment section uh, how you find our questions in the comment section below well thank you for coming and sharing your experience that means a lot to us uh, my to me my subscribers uh, my family that means a lot thank you for coming and that's thank you. all uh, i will be back with more such videos bye